Welcome to On the Issues. I'm Phoenix City Councilwoman Thelda Williams. On today's show, we're talking about redevelopment projects and how they are driving the Phoenix economy forward. We're going to hear the latest on the plans to redevelop Metro Center Mall from Warren Fink, COO of the firm in charge of the project. But first, we'll get a big picture view of redevelopment across District 1 of the city from Christine Mackey, Director of the City's Community and Economic Development Department. Chris, thank you for being on today's show. Thank you for and having me. congratulations, I hear you are the businesswoman of Arizona for this year. Actually nominated, nominated. I haven't won, I've not been nominated. You're gonna win. <laughs> You're the best. I am so pleased that you moved to Phoenix and become our director because you are a powerhouse. Thank you, I'm so excited to be here. This is an incredible city to work for and with and so many exciting things are happening. Well, tell us what's happening in District 1 in this last year, 18 months. Absolutely, well, District 1 is hot. Um, it is especially hot in financial services and new office projects along the I-17 corridor. It is probably the hottest of all the office markets in the metro area for attracting those new large, uh, large scale, large employers. Probably the one we've seen most uh, and everyone talked about was farmers mm -hmm. uh, going into kind of that I-17 area. Their building is under construction and they'll bring 1,500 new uh, really great jobs into that market. Uh, that area competed mightily throughout the valley for their location and uh, ended up being the location they chose and really selected that location because of the quality workforce, the diverse workforce, um, quality housing, and easy transportation through that area. So we're very excited. We've seen uh, you know, Metro North just mm -hmm. finishing construction with another 150,000 square foot office building. And we are on a tour of that building uh, multiple times throughout the month. And I'm sure it will have its tenant momentarily. But that whole corridor is just ripe for new office developments. We've seen our existing companies expanding. We've seen you know, the work PetSmart's doing and the work that Safeway's doing and uh, American Express. and. Honeywell and others throughout that area just growing leaps and bounds in that market. I am so pleased we had that one building that was so gigantic it was beautiful uh, had been empty I think for 20 years and you were able to get a business in there and the what was it? Aligned Energy Yes, is going they are finishing construction now I just saw them earlier this week they are finishing up construction and are looking forward actually to you cutting their ribbon. Oh, cool. uh, they that asked me exciting. to get on your calendar and are excited. They are, uh, they are working on green energy. They are completely redeveloping the 2500 Union Hills building and are excited where that will go. Their modules are moving in now. So they are a, a data center. So as we use our, our smartphones mm -hmm. and our devices and the more and more we use those, the more tech jobs go into those markets. So that building had been vacant for decades. Oh, forever. And really excited. They've redeveloped the landscaping and the facade of the building. It's it's turning out beautifully. I, I drove by the other day and I thought, oh, wow, uh, what an improvement. And it's just so exciting to have somebody there. Uh, but um, around Deer Valley Airport. Deer Valley Airport is booming. And the interesting thing is, is it's quietly booming. Um, you know, you, you go and kind of do a deep dive into that market and it's amazing the new kind of flex and industrial development that is going into that market. And as fast as the developers can build it, it's filling up. Probably the most recent company that's gone in there, Vitron Manufacturing, is an electronics manufacturer going into one of those new developments. And uh, we're seeing so much activity with great employers. And again, that, that whole market is, is strong employment corridor, strong transportation corridor, but people are seeing it as a great alternative to the Scottsdale Airport. So there'd been so much boom and activity around the Scottsdale Airport, and now they're identifying Deer Valley as really the place to be uh, in its ease of access and its availability of quality product. Uh, we are marketing not only the area around Deer Valley, but now the inside the fence. Uh, property of Deer Valley and expect to see some great new tenants coming up on the airport as well. I just had a developer in my office yesterday um, who wants adjacent on the north side, but there's no street. Right. Or they'll take it back. There's half a street. Right. And uh, 
working with them and the streets department to see, uh, because they have a development agreement with the city of Phoenix Correct. to build the other half of the street, because they have people that are already planning, uh, designing uh, to construct large buildings. Absolutely, so we are working closely at your direction with the streets department on identifying that as one of their next capital improvement programs to be able to get that street done, to be able to bring in those great quality jobs. So we are seeing a lot of activity, particularly in that 7th Street to Central along Pinnacle Peak that are interested in bringing great quality jobs into that market. So transportation and infrastructure are things cities do really well. Mm -hmm. So we're, we're looking forward to getting the rest of that street finished so we can get the, the jobs in and allow for the kind of the movement through that corridor to be easy for those employees. I, I was also had the uh, hospital come in, and although it's not in District 1, it's right. City of Phoenix, right. uh, uh, I have to give Councilman Waring credit for uh, this project, but they wanted to take where we had zoned the auto mall mm -hmm. and turn that into our entire medical campus, build a new hospital up there because the current hospital at 28th Drive and, and uh, the freeway basically, uh, the 101, is at max capacity. Right, and I think that's so indicative of what we're seeing in that corridor, which is high growth. People that want to be in that corridor and to have a strong medical campus just to that east of I-17 will drive those jobs and will drive more residents to live in the area. When you look as an economic development, it's not just about bringing quality jobs, it's about how it all fits together. And it fits together because if you can bring the workforce into a market, then a company can see themselves being there because the workforce is there, but the workforce can't see themselves living there unless they know where their kids are gonna go to school and where they're gonna shop and where the library is and where healthcare is. And when you look at the healthcare jobs that could exist on that campus, these mm -hmm. are high wage, strong economic impact jobs. And uh, and you know, also important though are those those auto malls and bringing revenue into the city to be able to shop Phoenix. So we're working closely with the auto users who had kind of identified that area to find another area, and that will be in District One. Uh -huh. So we're working good, closely good with work. them. Yes, thank you, thank you. <laughs> working closely with them now on identifying a site to bring forward for a potential auto mall. Interestingly enough, you know, no activity in that front for years mm -hmm. and now just absolutely thriving. We're hearing from high-end auto users on a constant basis. So we'll work diligently to find a site for them that doesn't impede on our residential users and it creates a great uh, economic ecosystem. You know, it's interesting, uh, downtown we talk about infill projects all the time, residential infill as well. And what I'm saying in District 1 are infill projects. Uh, we have all kinds of new housing going up. Uh, and they're selling, I understand, as fast as they put them up. And I think that's extremely, because it then builds the workforce. I also think the number of educational facilities uh, that are on I-17, I don't know if people recognize how many schools are in that area. I think there's like 14 uh, post-secondary mm -hmm. schools in District 1. It is such a strong educational area and it's such a, a stable housing market. When you look at the average residential time of people kind of in that District 1 area, it's about 17 years. That is unheard of, particularly in a transient market like Arizona still tends to be. So when we're marketing District 1 as a, a, an opportunity for these strong companies, that's exactly what we hit on, is how stable that market is in bringing in that quality workforce. And new housing coming in, you look around USAA. Mm -hmm. You know, USAA opened their new 400,000 square foot facility last year, but now some of that land that's to the east of their campus mm -hmm. will be new residential and new retail and still keeping you know their campus for, for future growth for USAA. but. Um, bringing in new potential employees for them that's go that'll live near their campus. And look at Metro Center, that as light rail moves forward in our transportation and the companies coming up into that corridor with those strong restaurants, that is gonna be a true urban corridor as we move through that next decade. It's, it's interesting, I, Warren's going to be on and talk about Metro Center development because uh, it, it under construction all the time. Something either on the ring road, you've got Walmart, 
uh, the restaurants are packed and now we're seeing more little retail shops coming in around. Um, everyone's so excited about it, so I'm thrilled. I'm very lucky I have Metro Center on one end and I have the outlet malls on the other end of the district and they're both doing very well. And I think that is indicative. They are both doing incredibly well. And I think, again, that's, that, that leads so true to the strong residential component that is in that area and the strong jobs that have found that area along the I-17 corridor in Deer Valley is uh, people have disposable income, they're loyal to the area and shop in the area. And I think we're gonna see that continue to boom. You know what I also see is second generation and third generation continue to live in that area. Isn't that amazing? They grew up there. They love the schools, good schools. Great schools. Great schools, yeah. And the neighborhoods, it's a very friendly district. Uh, we're fairly quiet in comparison to some of the others, but we are very block watch strong. Community spirit is always high and neighbors still have neighbors. And I think that's one of the reasons it makes it attractive and then helps businesses come in. And I think that, that speaks so much to what people talk about Phoenix. We're a big city, but a very small town feel. And the neighborhoods in that area have that very small town feel that people are looking for today and, and what they're looking for in their communities and their neighborhood. You know, I, I always laugh. We may be the sixth largest city, but there are no secrets in this place. Oh, there are not. I no. don't care whether it's in your neighborhood, city hall, downtown, where everybody knows everybody and the gossip is strong. They do, and if you talk to somebody that's been here more than five years for more than 10 minutes, you make a connection <laughs> with that person where you have a commonality of someone that you know and that you work with. And I think that, again, that's so much of what people are looking for in, in the country today is how they connect with their, their neighbors and their, their colleagues. Well, I want to thank you very much for all you do. You are um, spectacular. Well, thank you. Our team loves what we do. It's a, it's a lot of fun. Uh, our team kind of has the feeling if when economic development stops being fun, you should stop doing it. <laughs> and we have a very good time. And you really energize your people. I mean, they come in, they're revved. They've got great projects. So. Thank you so much for what you do and thank you for being here today. Councilman, thank you so much for having me here today. It was a true pleasure. Please stay with us to hear more about exciting plans to redevelop Metro Center Mall. A small commitment at least one day a week helps reduce ground level ozone pollution and helps us all breathe easier. Bike instead of driving. Ride public transportation carpool, walk to lunch, skip the drive through and go inside, sweep instead of using leaf blowers, fuel up after dark, become a creature of new habits this summer, commit to one day and help keep ozone away. Visit cleanairmakemore.com to learn how you can help. The redevelopment of Metro Center Mall has the potential to be a major economic driver not just for District 1, but for the entire city. I'm here with Warren Fate from Carlisle Development Group, the firm leading the redevelopment to learn more about this important project. Warren, welcome to the show. Well, thank you for having me. I had a, all kinds of phone calls about a month ago saying you were tearing Metro Center Mall oh, down. Yes. And so what's the real scoop? It's not being torn down. Um, yes, rumors uh, ran rampant um, throughout the city that we were tearing them all down. Um, we never expected that we were going to be doing that. Um, we wound up having various um, interviews and conversations as we have for the past few years regarding where we think Metro Center is going, some of the plans that we have and so forth. And those plans are still in conceptual format. Um, and as we were talking through some of these formats, some had some demolition, some had more demolition, some had no demolition. Um, and out of that uh, type of conversation that I've had in the past, um, the rumor came about that we were tearing down um, this major icon of Phoenix, and uh, that is far from the truth. Well, it definitely showed a lot of people are paying attention. Well, we, we saw that, and we, and, <laughs> and, and, and we realized um, as we always have, that uh, Metro Center really is an icon here in the city of Phoenix. 
And you know, from the time that we bought the center a little over four years ago, we always had the, the, uh, the, the foresight to think that this was going to be so much more than just a big retail um, project. Uh, but as we've gone through uh, you know, the, the planning process and getting a new PUD so that we can bring in other uses to the project, uh, all sorts of rumors start floating around that, yes, either we're going to knock it down, we're going to you know, bring in different types of businesses that uh, would not be conducive to uh, you know, some of our plans. I, we even, even heard a rumor that we were te tearing a lot of it down to bring in industrial. And again, the, where these things come out, I have no idea. Well, that one I hadn't heard. Yeah, well, we had. Oh, we well, had. So, I said, so what is going on there? Well, you know, for the past few years, um, as you know, uh, we've been working with the city. And, and a few months ago, uh, after a good deal of, of work and support from the city, uh, we had the PUD rezoning completed. And that was something right from the get-go that we always needed, we always wanted when we bought the center to know uh, or to, to plan for a big mixed-use urban um, dense type of project uh, that would bring in much more than just retail. Um, you know, the retail center that's been there for 40-something years, um, it served its purpose. Um, but as times have changed, uh, you know, consumers have changed, consumer wants and desires have changed, uh, retailers have changed and consolidated and so mm. forth. So this, this site is, is a unique site and when we looked at it early on, we knew it was not going to just remain a retail center. S having said that, however, uh, one of the first things that we did in order to create really a catalyst and some credibility was to bring a retailer back to Metro Center. And we thought that was important. Uh, we still have retailers. We're in the retail business there, uh, regardless of what our plans are. But the fact is that uh, we were very uh, focused on bringing Walmart to the project. And I'm, I'm very pleased to say, uh, it took a few years, uh, but Walmart is under construction. Mm -hmm. um, we, you know, we demolished the old Broadway store. So Walmart is under construction. They're pouring footings as we speak. Um, and they expect that they will have their super center opened in um, the summer of 2017. And that will be including a uh, full grocery store. So we're very excited about that. And I think the community is going to uh, react very positively about that. The neighbors are very excited oh, I about think so. it, I very think so. pleased. But then going further, um, you know, our whole process was to, you know, bring other uses um, to Metro Center. Um, it is a site that just sits on 17, uh, the highest concentration of vehicles per day. Um, the, the city uh, working with us now is bringing the transit center right to the ring road. Uh, so we're very excited about that for the uh, light rail and, and then the bus terminal will shift over to that. Um, and with the, with the PUD now in place since June, we're now in conceptual um, plans. And those concept plans, and they vary, um, you know, are bringing in health care, senior housing, multifamily housing, office. Um, we're very excited uh, about um, a call center that's looking um, at one of the back buildings and so forth. Um, you know, we have a center that still has a Macy's and a Dillard's operating and a mall that's still operating, uh, but we want to create something much larger than that. And this site is, is conducive to that. Um, you know, it is in the largest concentration of density in the city of Phoenix. Um, you know, the, the workers are here. And if we can bring in the type of uses that are compatible uh, for the retail, for office, for health care, for senior housing, and so forth, and also have public transportation right there. Uh, this is another city node that we think could be very effective. Oh, I think you're absolutely right. I, I have <clears throat> been very pleased that um, the neighbors, the corporate neighbors, um, small business, and the actual neighborhoods are so supportive of bringing the light rail in, mm. you know, because that can either be plus or minus around the city. Uh, but I think everyone recognizes the fact that it ties economic development, the jobs, and transportation together and reduces congestion on I-17. So I was at a, they call the scoping meeting. Uh, I think while you were at another seminar last time mm -hmm. you were in town. And I was so surprised. There had to be, oh, I would guess 70 people there. And it wasn't the usual neighborhoods. Mm. It was different businesses. Everyone there was supportive. I mean, anxious. When will it be built? 
and we were saying, well, this is part of the federal requirements right. for the process. Right. Uh, and I was so pleased because it's it's moving, not as fast as we'd like, mm -hmm. uh, but it is coming, and I think that's going to help. That area itself has the infrastructure that's needed, which I think should help you uh, get more buildings in oh, there. Absolutely. absolutely. Cause it's all there. Well, it's there, and and the fact that you have the roadway systems there now, you'll have the transit system coming. Um, you know, the the term live, work, play gets used a lot, but in effect, that's really what we're planning on doing here. Um, this truly could be a live, work, play environment, so that people can work there, they can live there, they can be entertained there, they can have experiences there, and at the same time, um, be so. Um, close to other parts of the city through the light rail, uh, to the museums, to the center city. Um, this, is, this is something that was very important to us, which is why we worked with the city to right. change you know, where the actual terminal um, position was going to be so that it would be right on the, uh, the service road and the ring road. So it was a very important uh, part of our planning process. And I think that that alone will help bring in corporate users Mm -hmm. um, you know, so for, for people that, or for companies that want to be there so that their employees can uh, have easy transportation to and from work. And at the same time, um, it's awfully nice if we have some apartments and some senior housing, um, which we're working very diligently upon uh, getting. I'm just waiting for that senior housing. Well, <laughs> I'm, I am too. Um, we, are, uh, we are getting very close. Uh, I've dealt with two different senior housing uh, companies here in town. Um, and one right now is going through uh, major architectural plans of a very specific site on our Metro Center site that could be the first uh, go-round for uh, a different use coming into Metro Center. So we're excited about that. <coughs> well, the restaurants are booming. The restaurants around us are continuing to boom. And, and growing. Absolutely. And when we saw, you know, when we came here a little over four years ago, that was really one of the things that we took a hard look at. Um, if we were going to get involved in Metro Center and, and anticipate the type of, of mixed-use project that could be here, uh, we really wanted to know that those restaurants are doing well. If they weren't, it meant that the market really wasn't strong enough to support the type of uh, environment that we're looking to have. And everything we saw was that the restaurants were doing well and continuing to expand. And, um, and that's mm -hmm. been great. And, and we're only hoping that as we then bring in other uses um, onto our site, because they're on the ring road, we could bring in other uses, that we will also start to bring in other restaurants right on site. And that would be also very, um, I think, interesting and compatible to the other uses that we're looking for. Well, I hear there's construction plans, so for a couple additional restaurants. Well, and, that's what I've heard. And, and a couple of the small businesses I, mm -hmm. I know are under construction. Well, they're small offices, but large businesses. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Big well, and we've seen, you know, we've seen the, the uh, uh, increase in growth of even the retail along Peoria. Mm -hmm. That's done very, very well. Mm -hmm. And again, that was, you know, a, a catalyst for us to really get excited about what could be here, but on a much larger scale. And, you know, when we're looking at some of the concept plans, and, and again, they're very preliminary, but when we're looking at these concept plans of putting retail and maybe office and residential on top of each other and creating a village. Uh, that's really what, you know, some of these concepts are coming forth with. The village concept, I, we've talked about this over mm -hmm. the years and, mm -hmm. and I, I just think you were so right on this. But while we're having this conversation, I want people to know they can still shop at Metro. We're still in business. Um, you know, regardless of the, of the rumors that we're knocking it down, um, we still have a retail business to run and, and as I said before, we have uh, Sears is there, we, Dillard's is there, uh, the mall is majority occupied, um, the Christmas tree is there, the, all the ornaments are up, uh, Santa is uh, coming soon, and in fact, um, as a uh, further inducement to the community, um, we've now uh, taken the, uh, the position that um, Santa photos are going to be free on the weekends. So families can come and um, have uh, their little kids taken uh, uh, on the on the lap of Santa and not have to pay for it. Oh, um, those are always fun adventures. And they are, they are. And uh, <laughs> we've also worked with 
as we have in the past, the local school districts, and we're getting some choral groups to come in on weekends and, and sing carols and so forth. So it's an exciting time. So you know, while we're in um, this redevelopment turmoil, we're still running a business, and that business continues to do well. And um, you know, we're, we're looking forward to a good Christmas, frankly. I, I'm so pleased that uh, we get to emphasize the fact that you're open for business mm -hmm. and that there are great stores there. And I know there's some great shoe stores there. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> Everybody knows me knows I have this shoe thing. Mm -hmm. um, mm -hmm. But um, I think it's so exciting that we continue to see it. businesses stay there to grow and to see the whole development happening. So I'm very encouraged. And you have become a, a great um, community supporter. I just want to thank you. Oh, I, I enjoy you being here. I mean, I'm, I'm back and forth. Uh, obviously, I live in New York, um, and I'm here once a month. Um, and I look forward to that. I mean, I've, I've been very fortunate uh, with our plans um, and our intense um, focus on getting what we want done. Um, to have worked with the city, and the city has been very, very supportive. You, of course, have been uh, our supporter from day one. Uh, but the staff, uh, going through planning and so forth, for all of the things that we had to go through uh, in order to get the, the full PUD approval, um, which is going to be phenomenal. I mean, and, and the fact is, I even, so, I even sold the uh, department stores um, on joining the PUD. So that, uh, yes, you did. so that those department stores will get the same benefits that we will get um, with density and height uses. Um, so if they ever decide to change direction, as, as we know, a lot of the department stores are changing direction. Well, they have to. Yeah, they definitely Too have much to. online shopping. And if that happens, then what are they going to do with, with their sites? Well, now they could do something beyond just retail. So. Well, I wish you a very successful Christmas season. Thank you. Always look forward to your trips in town and the conversations and catch up what's really going on. So. Well, I, I appreciate being here and again, happy Thanksgiving and have a great th Christmas. Thank you very much. And thank you so much for being here. This holiday season, I hope you will consider supporting our city by shopping in Phoenix. About 40% of our general fund revenue is from sales tax and of that, 43% comes from retail sales. General fund revenue is what pays for important city services such as police and fire. It also pays for our senior centers, libraries, streets and parks and more. You can make a difference in your city by simply shopping in Phoenix. Have a Merry Christmas and a Happy New Year. That's all the time we have for this month's On the Issues. If you have any questions or comments about the show, call my office at 602-262-7444 or visit my website at phoenix.gov slash district1. We'll see you next time on the Issues. <music>